the way. You have Buddha, Muhammad, but none of these are like our God. For history and time itself has proven time and time again that we serve the living God. Tell me who is like the Lord. No one who is like 
Good morning. Happy Sunday. Go ahead, sit down. Good morning. Uh oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, I ask this every Sunday, right? Now, don't be shy. I am not going to call you up here. But if it's your very first time here, raise your hand. Let me just see if it's your first time here. Look at it right there. Wow, a lot of face. That's nice. And back there. I like that. Very cool. Well, we love that. Love to have you here. Um, last time, I'm going to show it again, our little Connect card, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you're first time here, listen up when I show you that uh, Get Connected card. All right, let's look at a few things that happened here at Grace Centers of Hope and Grace Gospel Fellowship. One is this Friday, it is finally time. Who is, if you're moving into that new house, raise your hand. Let me see. Look at the, the yeah, these guys. There you go. There was like five people raise their hand that aren't, but they want to. They're like, in case there's a waiting list, I will. Yeah, but finally, we've been working on this house for a couple of years. It's finally coming to an end uh, this Friday, 10 o'clock. I'm going to show some before and afters while I'm talking. There's the old kitchen. Wouldn't want to eat in that kitchen, would you? But maybe in that kitchen you would. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, yeah you can clap for that. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so this Friday, if you can join us, if you're just visiting, you're here for the first time or the second time, or your family, you're watching online, come and you get to see what our neighborhood and what our houses look like. A lot of people don't know, but the housing part 
of this program is actually a church ministry. It's actually part of Grace Gospel Fellowship. So you go through the program, one-year program, you graduate. If you like to come into aftercare, you move into the community, and that's all underneath the church umbrella. So it's a very cool church opportunity to come see the neighborhood, see the houses, meet some people. The people moving in there are going to be there. So make sure you try and make it one more. This is when you walk in the front door, right? That's what it used to look like, and that's what it looks like now. A little different, eh? So how about a round of applause for everybody that made this happen? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of money went into that to make a house like that happen. So thanks to everybody who did that, all right? So make sure this Friday, 10 a.m., right, 27 Fairgrove Street. If you just head down Fairgrove Street, you'll find the house. Don't worry. So, all right? Now, another event coming up in about three weeks is our Women Helping Women Fashion Show. And that's Amy Andrews. If you watch Channel 2, she's our MC. So come and join us. There's still tickets left. It's a great opportunity to hear about the women's program. You see some testimonies. And some of the women and kids that are walking the runway are in our program, too. So it's a full runway fashion show. So make sure you join us for that. That's coming up. Our, our, look at that. I got applause already. I like that. Um, so our thrift stores, okay, they bring in a lot of income for our center. A lot of people are getting their lives back and are landing back in the workforce there for the first time. It's April. You got a lot of stuff in your house, in your basement, in your garage. You don't want to have a garage sale. Call the, call the thrift store. They'll come send a truck. If you have little stuff, clothes, small items, you can bring them to the thrift store or bring them right next door and drop them off. But we really can use those items, and we can use it to shop there too. So uh, come visit us at the thrift stores. There's four of them, so come do that. There's that Get Connected card. We want to say thank you because last week on everybody's seat was one of these cards, and a lot of people filled them out for us, and we really appreciate that. There's more in the back, so if you're new or if you didn't fill one out, grab one on your way out, bring it next week, stay and fill it out, leave it in the basket up there. Um, ask questions. Uh, give a prayer request. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you wish we did. But that's what those are for, to keep us connected and keep us growing, all right? So make sure you do that. Another thing people say, boy, you know what? I'm kind of cashless now. I don't have a checkbook. I don't bring cash with me. You can always donate online. We're going to put a few cards around out in the, uh, in the coffee bar so you can scan them with your phone. But that's another great way to give, too. You can go on Grace Centers of Hope or gracegospelfellowship.org, and you can find that code, too, and give online. Uh, now, what we're going to do is take our offering. Last week, we all stood up. We said hello to somebody, somebody we normally don't see. Maybe that person that sits behind you, you've never said hello to. So as we take our offering, take an opportunity to stand up, say hello to somebody, give somebody a handshake, let them know your name. But also, if you see these two people, give them an extra handshake and a hug, right? The new Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Beats. How about that right there, all right? Uh, they just got married. They want to make this their home church. So they'll, they'll be here, say hello to them, say congratulations, all right? All right, so let's stand up, let's take our offering, let's say hello to somebody next to you, from front of you, behind you, and have a great rest of the week.
Your 
There is only one that deserves all glory and all praise and all honor, and it is our Lord. Amen. Pastor has us in the Gospel of Matthew, the 27th chapter, going to be familiar to most of us. Um, I guess a cheap way to give a plug to our Sunday school class, we're going over the seven sayings of Jesus from the cross, and next week we're going to start with this exact saying, and we'll take maybe three or four weeks to tease it out in seven different directions. Verse 45 of chapter 27, Matthew. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came, came over the whole land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and offered him a drink. But the rest said, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again and with a loud spirit gave up his spirit. Loud voice gave up his spirit, sorry. Suddenly the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And they came out of the tomb after his resurrection, entered the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Many women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him were there watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's son. You may be seated. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let those who have ears to hear, hear. Lord, we know that nothing on earth is perfect. Our lives are messy, relationships complex, outcomes are uncertain because we are sinners and we are irrational. Without your grace and mercy, our hearts, our minds and souls are hardened, our judgments clouded and prejudiced, our sense of perspective stays skewed. We remain both self-absorbed, self-interested, and unfortunately self-satisfied. We need to seek you in your unmerited mercy, love, and grace. As your scriptures tell us, quote, there is one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself ransom for all. Draw us closer to you. Lord, we seek a special kind of peace, a shalom that only you can satisfy, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Create within us a new mind of love and obedience to you, a new heart that hates our sinfulness as much as you do, and a new soul that longs for the day when we see you face to face. If you're not too busy running the universe, save a lost soul today. Show a sinner that they are in need of a Savior. Come now, let your second advent happen sooner rather than later. We are tired of the world and want to go home. There are folks here today who are hurting, that are fighting with life itself. We know that our arms are too short to box with you, so please deliver the knockout punch to our hurts, frustrations, and anxieties. Save us from our own polluted thoughts. Be with Pastor as he continues to bring forth the good news of the gospel. Bless our tithes and offerings, the staff, residents, elders. Fill us with love that causes us to sin less and glorify your name through our thoughts, our actions, intentions, and deeds of obedience. As Charles Spurgeon once said, Christ bore the sins of the sinner, and thus he had to be treated as though he were a sinner, though a sinner he could never be. Thank you for being the perfect, spotless, righteousness, Passover lamb on our behalf. For it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray these things. Amen. 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 
Oh, good morning. You know, there are a lot of people out there hurting in this world. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, I tell you a story. Miss Pam and I were on a little uh, birthday celebration of hers. I won't tell you her age. She's a very young lady. She made me promise not to say how young she is. So. Um, we were on a cruise ship for four days. We enjoyed ourselves very much. But something happened on that uh, ship on Friday <coughs> morning early. We were just getting back uh, from the cruise. And I don't know how many of you have been on a cruise, but it's uh, drink time. On the, on the cruises, it's a party time. This young couple uh, went on the cruise, boyfriend, girlfriend, and father and mother of the uh, boyfriend, and they got in an argument about 4 a.m. That's in the morning. Um, and uh, the girlfriend, boyfriend got in an argument and he jumped out of the pool and ran and jumped overboard. And that mother and father and the girlfriend were left there without him. They never found his body. <coughs> um, and he died. And I wonder, I just want to, I just want to say to you, um, drugs is not the answer, Christ is. Amen. And there is joy and peace, joy unspeakable and full of glory in knowing Christ. Well, let's talk for a few minutes. You know what's going to happen tomorrow at 2 o'clock? How many of you know what's going to happen tomorrow at 2 o'clock? Oh, I thought. I don't see how you could help knowing what's going to happen tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Everybody uh, is talking about it. Uh, and I want to not talk about it so much as to talk about what is really important. Grace Gospel Fellowship is a miracle place. Do you believe in miracles? Amen. 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 I often say this, you're sitting in a miracle place. Yeah. You really are. This is a miracle place. <clears throat> God has been so good to us. I would tell you this, that Christianity or being a church member without miracles is pretty boring. You ever been in church and been bored? Yeah. That shouldn't happen. You weren't bored this morning with the singing. It was a hallelujah time. Let me read this uh, hymn. I saw one hanging on a tree in agony and blood. He fixed his eyes on me as near his cross I stood. Oh, can it be upon a tree the Savior died for me? My soul is thrilled, my heart is filled to think he died for me. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, when the eclipse takes place and things go dark here, I want you to think about what happened in church today. I want you to think about the message you heard today. The eclipse reminds me of what happened when Christ was hanging on the cross. Somebody said, well, you know, I wouldn't make that a miracle of God. I don't know whether it was a, 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 a usual eclipse, but I do know this, the world went dark 
in the three hours of darkness. And God hid his son from the view of wicked men and women. Uh, let me give you a little science. A solar eclipse happens when at just the right moment, the moon passes between the sun and the earth. So tomorrow won't be such a big deal as today. And what happened today, nearly 2,000 years ago, right? What happened on this day was the most amazing thing. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I would, I would, I thought about doing this. I thought about taking off my shoes. Uh, but then I worried about whether I could bend over far enough to tie them back. So <laughs> I'm not going to take off my shoes. But I am going to tell you this. We're on holy ground. Yeah. What a day this was. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. He gave his life's blood for even me. This Jesus was a miracle worker. Do you feel it? Do you sense it? Do you know it in your heart and soul? Is he a miracle worker to you? Is he a glorious, awesome Savior? Do you know him? and have an intimate relationship with him. Now for me, this three hours of darkness was not an eclipse. It was a supernatural work of God. Amen. I do believe that. Amen. The eclipse that took place in 2017 only lasted two minutes and two seconds long. This darkness at Calvary lasted three hours. I want you to think about that. Right there today, sitting in your seat, think about this. What was those three hours of darkness all about when God turned midday into midnight and the birds cluttered in the trees and the herbs of cattle came together because they felt and sensed a storm was coming. Actually, a storm was coming. The war of the ages was about to take place. And you and I, who are Christians today, were about to be saved by Jesus Christ on the tree of the cross. Amen. His name shall be called Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? You know, I believe in the miracle of Jesus being born. But now you might want to hold your child's ears if they're sitting here. But I don't believe in Santa Claus. I believe in the miracle of Jesus being born in a manger. Do you? That God came into the world to save sinners. That God condescended. He became flesh in order to save us. And he walked the Judean acres without sin. I don't know why uh, we always turn religious holidays into Santa Claus and rabbits. I have never understood how a rabbit uh, has eggs, multicolored eggs, and why I deny and people deny the miracle of Calvary. This, you see, I believe in miracles. I do, indeed. And here's what the scripture says. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks 
rent. Wasn't this an unusual day? Wasn't this a miracle day? I mean, something, something was happening here at Golgotha. Something big is about to take place. Three hours of midnight in midday. You know, that veil renting, I was studying that yesterday and thinking about it. What an awesome thing that was. You know, that veil was uh, four inches thick of, of uh, string together, twine. And someone said yesterday in the, one of the commentaries, it was 30 feet tall, four inches thick, 75 feet wide, 150 feet long. And it rent in twain. Not from the bottom up. That's how you rip something, usually. But from the top down. And you know what? There's a way op open now for you to come to God. Back in the Old Testament, when the, God gave his law and came down to Mount Sinai, God told Moses, tell the people to stay away, put up a fence. If anybody comes, even touches the mountain, they'll die. There is no way for you to approach God through the law. Those of you who think you're good, you're not. Amen. Don't try to approach God with your goodness and your works and your religion. But there is a way open. The veil has been rent in twain. And Jesus says to you, to you, the Lord says to you, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And tomorrow at, at two o'clock when it goes dark around here, I, I didn't buy my glasses in order to look up. I don't know whether I will or not. So the moon's gonna pass by and set out the sunlight. I can, have, I can take that. But what happened 2,000 years ago at Golgotha? I can't get over that. Three hours of darkness. God hid his son in his shame and humiliation. The Bible says not only was the veil rent, but graves opened. Oh, I believe in miracles. And the closer I get to 80, the more I believe in miracles, especially graves opening. The dead in Christ are going to rise. Do you believe that? Yeah. It is appointed unto man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. But he says to us who are Christians, don't be heavy laden. Come unto me, I'll rest you. What a story this is of the crucifixion of Christ. And you know, I was reading it this week. I, I, I love this story. In 1964, January, I brought my first message and used this text at Grace Baptist Church in Warren, Michigan, and I was 19 years old. Brought my first message. I think, uh, I think I cried for about five minutes and spoke three, maybe. But the Lord, this is the message where the Apostle Paul would say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God and the salvation. This message never gets old. It's the dynamite of God. And you're here today. You need a miracle. I'm talking about, do you believe in miracles? I look forward to the day when I believe these balconies will be filled. Maybe we have to have three or four services a day on Sunday. Uh, that's why you're gonna have a younger pastor because I can't cut it, I can tell you that. I believe this place is going to see what we have never seen yet. And believe you me, this is a place where God shows up. I was reading that, those passages of scripture in John 
And, you know, it seemed like, as I was reading it, that God was going to let all this pass. And it wasn't going to be a big deal, or God wasn't going to make notice of it, or there wasn't going to be somebody who stood up, certainly not Simon Peter. He denied the Lord. The disciples had all fled. There was nobody there. There was no witness. When out of nowhere, there was a voice. In that stony silence, there was a voice that said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Wait a minute. That's a crook. That's the voice of a thief. You mean the only witness on this day is going to be a thief? One of the thieves that... The Bible said there was two thieves. This is amazing to me. This is amazing grace. There were two thieves, and they railed on him, both of them. Both of them. There was no difference between the thieves. One was not a church member, and one was not. One was not a good man, and one was not. They were both thieves. They were crooks. They deserved to be on the cross. But that one thief said, Lord, I believe in miracles because I've said that too. I was dead in my sins, and I've been regenerated and born again of the Spirit of God. And that can happen today. Miracle can happen to you today. Regeneration, where you're made alive in Christ Jesus. Isn't that awesome? I think that to be awesome. And Jesus turned to that thief who just a few minutes ago had railed on Jesus and said things like, well, if you be who you say you are, come down from the cross and save us. But Jesus answered to one thief. Has he answered you in your cry? Today thou shalt be with me. Not tomorrow, not next year. Not when you're baptized. Not when you join the church. But today... You'll be with me in paradise. That's the promise of our Lord. That's a miracle. I think what has happened, here I am, 79 years old, and I have watched for 50 plus years as the church got more boring and we have lost the wonder of it all. What needs to happen is you need to find that wonder. I see some of you are, you know, in our, in our church, uh, over churches that I have pastored, people, you know, just sit there like bumps on logs. I like you hollering out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I love what the old Puritan said. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus found me. Amen. Is that a wonder to you? Yes. I don't know where you were when he found you, but I can guarantee you this, wherever you were, you were lost. You didn't find yourself, but Jesus sought you out of Lodibar and came to you when you would not come to him. Amen and brought you to himself. What a wonder that Jesus found me out in the darkness. No light could I see. Have you been in that darkness of sin? Was life pretty dark? Have you been in a place where you didn't know about whether you wanted to live or not? I think about this 20-year-old that jumped off that ship into those cold waters of the ocean died and drowned. Is that life with you? I'll tell you at times with me, like when we were singing a few minutes ago, 
There was rivers of living water flowed in my soul. There was peace like a river. There was joy unspeakable. I don't think I live a day where I say something like this, life sucks. No, today I'm in Christ. Today I'm happy, today I'm rejoicing in him. Is that you? Do you believe in miracles? I hope you do. I hope you do. And then the scripture says that Jesus cried with a loud voice and cried, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sebastiana, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Do you understand? And let it sink into your heart tomorrow at two o'clock when this world goes dark. Think about it. 2,000 years ago plus, the savior of poor sinners took my sins in his own body. God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. And just cry out, hallelujah, what a savior. He died in my stead. He died in my place. I never, you say, Pastor, that's, that's about all you preach. Oh, but it's so much. How are you going to explain this? Christopher and I were talking up here just a few minutes ago. How do you explain that? And God became sin for us. Jesus bare our sins in his own body on the tree. How do you explain this? That God, his heavenly father, turned his back on his own son. God never turned his back on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God never turned his back on Daniel and the lion's den. God's never turned his back on me. But God turned his back on his only begotten son because he took my sins. Can you say this? I'm not going to hell. You know why? The price has been paid. There is no condemnation for me because Jesus paid it all. All the dead I owe, sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Isn't it awesome? Two o'clock tomorrow when the world goes dark, let the light of God shine into your heart with this glorious truth. My sins are paid for. Oh, what a savior. Oh, what a redeemer I have in Jesus Christ. You know, I thought about this too. When he said, Eli, Eli, Lamb of Sebastian, they said, oh, he's, he's calling for Elias and Elijah. And I thought to myself, years ago, I brought a message from the Gospels on the Transfiguration where Jesus met with Moses and Elijah. And you know what the Bible says? And Jesus and Moses and Elijah talked about his decease. And it says this, how he would accomplish his decease. Do you understand this? That nobody killed Jesus. Amen. He gave up his life. You, do you understand this? He died for you. He didn't have to die. He could have called 10,000 angels and destroyed the world. But he died in my place and in my stead. And here's what the Bible says. Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. He died. He died for his sheep, John 10 says. I lay down my life for the sheep. Nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down that I might take it up again. And then on the third day, he arose with a triumph or his foe, and he defeated my every enemy. And today in Christ, 
I am free and alive. There are there's so many things I could say about this day. And to go to Calvary, you know, you know what's happening in hell and with the devil right now? I can tell you what's happening. The devil doesn't like this. He doesn't like me as much as I stammer and stutter and try to proclaim the gospel and declare that Jesus died as a substitute for sinners. The devil doesn't like that. He hates that. He hates what's going on here. But God uses it to bring poor sinners to himself in Christ Jesus. The great and grand objective of the enemy of souls is to becloud the cross. So I thought to myself, Monday when everybody's got their glasses on and got boxes over their head with slots in the... <laughs> I'm going to be, I, don't, I won't have any of that probably. You, you go ahead, make sure you protect your eyes though. But I'm going to be thinking about this. One day, when heaven was filled with his glory, he died on the cross in my place. Can you imagine what a day that was in heaven when he said, it is finished, it is accomplished. And old man Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, they're shouting in heaven. They're up there in glory with the Lord. Can you imagine when he went home that day? When he went back to heaven? And all heaven went crazy with rejoicing. It is a glorious day. Yep, we're going to have a darkness tomorrow around 2 o'clock. But wherever uh, Ken Clark is, he'll be, hallelujah. hallelujah. My sins are gone. And, you know, I was reading so many commentaries about how preachers, I'm amazed at preachers, how they're emphasizing the solar eclipse that, that happened at Calvary. And I said, talk back, do you ever talk back to books you're reading? I said, you mean for three hours? That darkness took place for three hours? I've never read of an eclipse that long. But there was on this day. And God Almighty closed his son in darkness. I thought about this too. You don't see this much, even in Rome, when you go to where the Pope is and all of those pictures of Christ, they have him clothed. I think they did that several years after they had the pictures of Christ. But the truth is, the Son of God died without any clothes on. But God honored him by covering his manhood and nakedness. God did that. I believe that. I believe it was a miracle. And what I'm trying to tell you, and in closing, our God is a miracle worker. And I hope you're going to believe with me that God is going to do miracles here. I hope that you believe our children are going to be converted. That men and women lost in this world. Boys like the boy that jumped off the ship. Telling his girlfriend and his parents, I'll show you. And ran and jumped off the ship. Is that, is that, your, is that the way your life is? Not mine. You know, I'm going to get up tomorrow. There's going to be an eclipse at 2 o'clock. It's not going to be a big deal for me. So, well, it's getting dark outside, but it's only going to last about a minute and 40 seconds. And it's going to be over. All those people going up to the University of Michigan to get a better eclipse, they're going to have a party up there, you know. 
they're not going to be thinking about what I've told you today, that there was a dark and dreary day when there was three hours of darkness and God Almighty had come down here to save us from our sins. I'm going to be rejoicing in that tomorrow. Well, still got a little hoarseness, but what a glorious message we have in Christ. I would just like to say this to you. Say, oh, Pastor, you know, that wasn't very deep. I thought it, I thought it'd be deeper than that. You don't get any deeper than this. Amen. This is as deep as she goes. You ever thought about your sinnership? That it took God Almighty to take your debt, to pay it, to satisfy his righteousness, and imputes to you. When you get to heaven, none of your unrighteousness is going to be hid from the eye of God. But you're going to stand before him perfect without blame in Christ. Amen. I am complete in Christ. Amen. Isn't that going to be a great time? I would encourage you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right where you are. And do you know if that happens, if that happens, you ought to come tell us about it. You know, we'd love to hear it. Would you love to hear it, that somebody comes to Christ today? What a glorious Savior. And you know what? Not only will we clap, but all of heaven will go crazy. You know, the, the, the folks in heaven, when someone confesses faith in Christ and trusts Christ, the folks in heaven are, are shouting, hallelujah, <laughs> this is what's supposed to happen. And then the angels, they watch the people of God giving God praise and over the conversion of sinners, those angels are provoked to song themselves. And the Bible says 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of angels praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know, I know this. I'm not a great preacher but I have a great Savior. Amen. I know that. I know that's true. He's a great Savior. Could I encourage you today? Confess Him as your Lord and Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And tomorrow at 2 o'clock when the world gets dark, tell your 5, 6, 7, and 8-year-olds about the three hours of darkness and what God did at Calvary for sinners. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Let's stand and sing together.
All right. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, when the moon begins to hide the sun from showing its light, giving its light, I want you to call me and tell me you've trusted Christ. Yeah, just pick up your phone there in the midnight darkness. Pastor, I trusted Christ. I had a miracle today. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and Savior. Yeah, you can do it now if you want to. And then uh, I want to say to those who are watching in Kentucky and Tennessee and Alabama and different places across the country, uh, you have my phone number, but you can't call me because I left my phone on deck five of the ship. <laughs> But you can call Miss Pam, <laughs> and she'll give me the message. I'd love to hear from you that you've come to Christ. Right there by yourself in the midnight darkness of the day, trust the Lord Jesus. I think we ought to sing every praise before we go home. And then we can go. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, uh, every praise does go to you. Father, we praise you and we thank you and we glorify you uh, for your matchless grace. Your grace is amazing. And God, we thank you that we were once um, 
deciding what we wanted to even do with our own lives, God, until you came into our hearts and born us again and gave us faith to trust you and to see how amazing you truly are and how you have protected us and guided us and lead, lead us and God have been there for us even when uh, we weren't even there for ourselves God Father we thank you for that and Father we ask that you empower us to go outside these walls and to to be your church yes. to those who are hurting and suffering and lost God those who are looking to all kinds of uh, things in this world shiny things that will only rust and will never satisfy but we have the greatest message ever told, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, Amen. to which each of us can say, we are chief, but, but you, God, are bigger. You're bigger than all our sin. And so, Father, we thank you today. We leave with grateful hearts, praising you and looking to you and uh, sharing your good news. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.